So let's try to find the solutions to this equation right over here. We have the quantity 2x minus 3 squared, and that is equal to 4x minus 6. And I encourage you to pause the video and give it a shot. And I'll give you a little bit of a hint. You could do this in the traditional way of expanding this out, but there might, and then turning it into kind of a classic quadratic form. But there might be a faster or a simpler way to do this if you really pay attention to the structure of both sides of this equation. Well, let's look at this. We have 2x minus 3 squared on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we have 4x minus 6. Well, 4x minus 6, that's just 2 times 2x minus 3. Let me be clear there. So this is the same thing as 2x minus 3 squared is equal to 4x minus 6. If I factor out a 2, that's 2 times 2x minus 3. And so this is really interesting. We have something squared is equal to 2 times that something. So if we can solve for the something, let me be very clear here. So the stuff in blue squared is equal to 2 times the stuff in blue. So if we can solve for what the stuff in blue could be equal to, then we could solve for x. And I'll show you that right now. So let's say, let's just replace 2x minus 3. We'll do a little bit of a substitution. Let's replace that with, let's replace it with p. So let's say that p, p is equal to 2x minus 3. Well then this equation simplifies quite nicely. The left hand side becomes p squared. p squared is equal to 2 times 2 times p. Because once again, 2x minus 3 is p. 2 times p. And now we just have to solve for p. And I'll, I'll switch to just one color now. So we can write this as, if we subtract 2p from both sides, we can get p squared minus 2p is equal to 0. And we can factor out a p, so we get p times p minus 2 is equal to 0. And we've seen this show multiple times. If I have the product of two things and they equal to 0, at least one of them needs to be equal to 0. So either p is equal to 0, or p minus 2 is equal to 0. Well, if p minus 2 is equal to 0, then that means p is equal to 2. So either p equals 0 or p equals 2. Well, we're not quite done yet because we wanted to solve for x, not for p. But luckily, we know that 2x minus 3 is equal to p. So now we could say either, either 2x minus 3 is going to be equal to this p value, is going to be equal to 0, or 2x minus 3 is going to be equal to this p-value, is going to be equal to 2. And so this is pretty straightforward to solve. Add 3 to both sides. You get 2x is equal to 3. Divide both sides by 2. And we get x is equal to 3 halves. Or over here, if we add 3 to both sides, we get 2x is equal to 5. Divide both sides by 2. And you get x is equal to 5 halves. So these are the possible solutions. And this is pretty neat. This one right over here, you could almost do this in your head. It's, it's, it was nice and simple. While if you were to expand this out and then subtract this, it would have been a much more uh, complex set of operations that you would have done. You still would have hopefully gotten to the right answer. Uh, but it would have just taken a lot more steps. But here we could appreciate some patterns that we saw in our equations. Uh, namely, we have this thing being squared, and then we have 2 times that same thing, 2 times 2x minus 3.